This is a tutorial about using Photoshop. It will help you put different images together. This tutorial will help you put different images together to form a unique image of your own. It will also show you how to use some of the Photoshop tools to manipulate your images. This will particularly help you when doing your digital self-portrait as part of your Frida Kahlo case study. Use one of the paintings that have been uploaded in our Canvas Learning Management System as inspiration for your work. You can choose another portrait painting not listed, but check with your teacher first. The image I am using for this tutorial is an artwork called The Scream by Edvard Munch. You may not use this image in your work for two reasons. First, I'm showing you this in the tutorial and probably most importantly, the screen has been used to do this sort of thing so many times before, I want you to do something more original. You first need to find a collection of electronic images that you can use. Collect the background image that either you have taken or that you have taken from the internet. You will also need to use a photograph of yourself by either using one that you have already taken or taking a new photograph for your project. Also, collect at least one image that reflects part of your personality, your interests or activities that you really enjoy doing. If you are using images from the internet, make sure they are copyright free. You can do this through either Creative Commons or in a Google image search. If you are using a Google image search, filter the search tools to choose the type of permission you need. For these purposes, the best would be for non-commercial use with modification. Put all of these images in one folder on your computer. Now open Photoshop on your computer. Our computers at school have Photoshop already installed and you can access it through the start menu of your computer. Start with the background image that you have collected and open this in Photoshop. Open the other images you are going to use also. We now go back to our background image by clicking the tab here. Choose Image, Adjustments, and then choose one way to change your image. Since my image is black and white, I want to put a bit of colour into it. So I'm going to be choosing Colour Balance, then adding some colour in both the mid-tones and the shadows. I'm not happy to have so many white areas. So I'm going to select color range and then select the white areas. You can adjust the areas that are selected by moving the fuzziness tool. The higher the number, the greater the area that is selected. From there, I'm now going to fill those areas with yellow. I click on the foreground tool and double click, click on yellow and then those areas that are selected, edit, fill foreground colour and there we have it. We then now deselect those areas. This part shows you how to select parts of your portrait image to go into the background. Click in the tab where your portrait image is. 
to choose those parts of yourself that you want to go into the image, you can use the lasso tool. Click in the bottom right and hold it down and you can choose from a freeform lasso tool, a polygonal lasso tool or what they call a magnetic lasso tool. However, because my image is on a plain white background, I can choose something called a magic wand here. The magic wand selects all the colours that are the same. You can see here how accidentally is picked up part of that collar. If I click on the Alt button and then the polygonal lasso tool, I can actually deselect those parts. I now have selected all the white section here, but I actually want the image. And so I now go to Select, Inverse, and that now has the image. I go Edit and Copy to be able to copy the image to the clipboard. I'm now going to place my self-portrait image into my background. Click on the background, edit, paste. But you can see here it is a bit large for my purposes. So now I click edit, transform, and I want to scale that to a smaller size. So I click on scale and some boxes ar arise around it. I click the shift button to make sure I don't stretch it and I can click and move it and scale it down to the size that suits my needs. I click enter once I'm happy with the size. I'm now going to get the interest image that I selected and get that into my background also. I click on the image. Again, because it's on a white background, I can use my magic wand tool and click. Again, I've now selected just the white areas, so I want the brushes, so I select Inverse, Edit, copy that. I now go back to my Harbour Bridge image, Edit, paste. Now again it's a little too large for my purposes so edit, transform and I'm going to scale that and again remember if you don't want to stretch it then you press the shift key and then drag. I then press enter but I now want to rotate that. Again edit, transform, rotate and you'll see how here how a little rotate button happens and you can drag that around to rotate it. Press enter. And now with this particular image, I want it to look like those brushes are underneath my arm. So I'm now in this layer. I click on my eraser tool and I can actually erase those parts of the brushes in front of my arm to make it look like it's coming from underneath my arm. The final thing I'm going to be doing with my image is using filters to manipulate it just one final bit more. Firstly, we can do that by doing that in each of the backgrounds, but I'm actually going to do something called flatten the image, so I do it to the whole image. Click on this button here and flatten the image. Once I flatten the image, I can't put it apart into different layers anymore. I click on Filter, Filter Gallery. In the Artistic Filters, there's lots of different types, but I want Poster Edges. Click on that. Click on OK. I'm going to add one more filter. Filter. I'm going to go to Distort. And again, lots more different filters you can choose from, but I'm going to pick the twirl filter. And I'm, I'm going to just put a bit of a twirl to it. If you're happy with that image, 
all you need to do is click on File, Save As, and I want you to save that image as I don't want it that. I want it final self portrait and then your name. Hey presto, it's done. Congratulations. Remember, there are heaps more tools in Photoshop that you can use, but the best way is to find out about them, explore, and experiment. Once your image is complete, upload it to Canvas for your teacher to mark.